I would like to share a story with you. Last fall, we were in the middle of our pilot project for our kids' cooking class. And during the education segment, one of the little boys came up in class and kind of tugged on my apron string. And he said, Chef Jen, I have to tell you something. And I said, what? And he said, I just love this class. And he was smiling from ear to ear. And that just mourned my heart. He wanted to share with me that he gets to try things here that he doesn't get to try at home. He said, my mommy doesn't cook and we eat at McDonald's from the dollar menu. Mommy said it's easier and cheaper than cooking. I just had to ask, well, how often do you eat like this? And, and how often do you eat out? And he says two to three times a week and a lot, a lot of the times on the weekends. That was the moment right there that I knew that there was so much more going on in this class than just teaching a child how to cook and how to eat the food. If he was eating like this, were there other children doing the same? When I asked the children, how many of you eat fast food during the school, during the school week and on weekends, the average child was eating two to three times. That's 20 out of, the, 20 out of 20 students. 60% of my students in class were eating fast food more than two to three times a week. A little over nine months ago, I received a call from my colleague at Lancaster Recreation Commission. She says, I have an opportunity for an intergenerational grant, but I have no idea where to start. So after a few minutes of discussion, because I'm a chef, we decided to try a children's culinary class. However, I realized very quickly on, never have taught pre-K children before, and especially 20 in a class, that I was going to need some help. And I needed people that were comfortable with cooking. Where was I going to get this help? Well, then I realized right in the same building at Lancaster Rack that we had seniors coming in every day through the downstairs back door going into their activity classes. And we had the children coming in upstairs with their parents going right to the classroom. But there was no interaction between the two. So then here's the thought. What would happen if we put them both in the same class and we focused on learning and what would happen? Well, that's where Link was, that's where Link was created, the Lancaster Intergenerational Nutrition Collaborative. As a retired chef through Link, the one thing that I get to experience every week is teaching, education, empowerment, and, and really about food for low-income families and their children. Because of this class, I now know that food brings people together in our community in a safe place. They begin to share and create things that I never thought were even possible. A place that we were able to teach value of food and teach these children why they should be eating such food, preparing these foods so that they grow and can thrive into healthy adults. And the one thing that I walked away from, never experienced before, was the interaction between the, senior, the seniors and these young people. They learned about each other, we learned about diversity, we learned about different ages and different abilities. This, this class has been so popular that there's actually a waiting list at Lancaster Rec Commission for fall of 2020. I thought this was just a story of me, an old retired chef, and a little five-year-old and his love of the culinary class, but this is really a story of low-income children learning cooking skills that I consider and they consider now life skills that are gonna help them grow and thrive into young adults. Right now, Link is only offered in one Lancaster City organization. We reach 40 children a year. My hope and desire is that this program can be replicated and shared throughout the United States. Thank you for learning more about Link today. Help me share this program with others because you know as well as I do, that the happiest meals are those had at home shared around the table. Thank you.